Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It gives me great pleasure to welcome one of the greatest mediators around, John Biancardi, to its rainmaking time. Mr. Biancardi has had a mediation business for over 15 years. He develops and instructs courses on the subjects of mediation and divorce. He teaches at the UCLA Extension he has for the last 15 years. He's one of the only people in the country that have seven copyrights to his methods and processes for mediation. He does 10-hour mediation sessions to settle divorces for less than $5,000. There's almost nobody doing what he's doing or even understands how to do what he does. He's humble. He's clear. He's got tremendous integrity. And he's on to something about what we really should be doing when we're in this level of a conflict with our spouse. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome John Biancardi to It's Rainmaking Time. Good morning. Good morning, Kim. It's good to talk to you again. Thank you very much for that gracious opening. I'm, I'm flattered. Thank you so much. And I appreciate this opportunity for speaking with you. When I met you several years ago, I think it was 2004, you had shared with me that you mediate 10-hour divorces. And I want to know, are you still doing that? And how are you able to do that? Sure. It's an outstanding question. Some people are skeptical, so let me address that. I have that, as you mentioned, a copyrighted methodology for mediation. So in broad sense, it's not just two or three people in there shooting the breeze. There's a definite method to what I do. It's very lineal. It's never rushed. You're never hurried. But it moves along in a straight line with me shepherding people along the way. So actually right now, my statistical average since that time is the more you do things, the better you get it, is actually eight hours. I average two four-hour sessions for divorce. And the reason is, since I'm there as that third party, it cuts out all the bickering that couples love to do. So I'm able to control or continue bickering, focus on what's really important, and then move towards solution. When you do that, you're focused and you have the skill sets of a mediator, how to manage emotions, how to actively listen. It, you can effectively negotiate any divorce in about eight hours. So it's proven true even statistically to this day. See, here's the tragedy. There's a lot of people that have come as far as they can go in their marriage. And they've either grown apart or one has grown further than the other or they have different interests at that time in life. And it's no longer what it was after all these years. And the divorce doesn't have to be cantankerous. It doesn't have to be horrible and nasty. Hundreds and thousands of dollars don't have to be bled from a person's family. And so there's a lot of times that it's appropriate to then initiate a divorce. And even with people that are very mature and very clear and very together, they're processing pain, they're processing loss, they're processing not doing the day-to-day -day with this other person, even though they may have moved on emotionally. And the problem is that when they go to a traditional attorney, the attorneys bring in something that's very different than a mediator. The whole consciousness of a lawyer or an attorney is totally different than a mediator. But most people don't believe a mediator at $400 an hour, many of them charge, can solve anything, and that can still be expensive too. Yes, and between those two choices, litigation and mediation, which are your only two choices, well, actually, there's a third choice. People can actually self-divorce if they're willing to go through all that process. But what mediation does, and to reflect on the essence of what you just asked me, I, I always tell folks, I had to learn that people can fall out of love. But all the couples I've done, they all swear to me that in the beginning they were in love, and I have to believe them. And so I just tell people, apparently you can fall out of love. But whether it's just I, we mutually fell out of love or it's hotly contested because something bad happened in the marriage, uh, mediation is still the way to go because we don't, as you were implying, mediators do not play on people's fears or frustrations or anger. We dissipate those emotions. We avoid the litigation games, and people can kind of cut to the chase. So part of my efficacy is not only the methodology, but any mediator worth his or her salt in a divorce situation with his emotionality contains that um, we're, not on a, uh, we're not an ATM machine for folks, which is why I did the flat fee, and we can address that a little later. But as you're billing out, uh, when you de-escalate the hostilities, the uh, length of the um, argument is dramatically reduced. So 
So mediation's efficacy is not just we manage emotions. There's no legal strategies involved. It's straight to the cut to the chase. And people realize they're in control of their own situation. Their emotionalities can be all over the map, but I always apologize to them that if the only thing, and here's what I say to them, the only thing I can't fix in a divorce is a broken heart. And it's true. It's the only thing I can't fix in a divorce is a broken heart. So if one of them has that, I can address that. Or if they're just both so angry that they can't even be in each other's presence, mediation also addresses that without buying into that game that can fuel a lawsuit. The thing is that we have a litigious paradigm that surrounds married couples and people that are together so that when it's appropriate to separate and to reconstruct their lives, that next part of the process is surrounded by a culture of friends, associates, and acquaintances that often will superimpose their unfinished business with stuff onto the people that are separating fueling legal action. And so that's the gravity of what's happening. By the time you come in, they're all being told by their friends, associates, and acquaintances, and anybody that they'll talk to, to go to a lawyer. And I can see that you uh, have done some homework and you've been uh, aware of the situation. You're exactly right. Um, When people come to me, I'll tell them, particularly at the first session, I used to have two sessions, I'll tell them, you're getting advice. I already know you're getting advice from everybody. I, I tell them, do your homework. I want them to come in prepared, no doubt. But do not listen to friends and family if they're not in the field or the profession. I said, they mean well, but who knows what their personal agenda is towards you or the other person. So I tell them, unless it's a professional, don't listen. Because most people, God bless them, give advice, but that's bad advice. Because there are so many myths, if you will, surrounding divorce. Well, you know, California is a community property, no-fault state, which is why mediation works perfectly for it. It's going to end up where it ends up anyway. The only time you have to fight in a divorce is if someone was purposely hiding something. Well, now they're perpetrating a fraud, so of course it gets more complicated. But in your everyday divorce where people are just dissolving not only their relationship ties but their financial and debt ties, uh, that can easily be done in a negotiation process in a community property, no-fault state. But to, to go back to your uh, original point, I'm not saying attorneys buy into that uh, and, and cause the issue. The system, our legal system causes that. When people go excessively off, they're listening to the battle voices rather than the diplomatic voices. And that's what media is, is bring a diplomatic voice to this situation because it's going to settle. Uh, it, everything you just described is what happens in a divorce, sometimes times 10. It's bad. Uh, but uh, when you dissipate those hostilities, which is much of what the media is doing in the beginning, uh, giving people that forum to say in a confidential, safe environment, that you can release much of the negative energy so they can now reason with each other again. How are you able to do this without being a therapist? Seriously. Yeah. Well, and on, on one hand, for full disclosure, I used to be a therapist. That's part of my background. I'm kind of culmination, if you will, of a, a mediator. I used to be a therapist. So now, you don't have to be a therapist, but what you must be, and I, and I think this is something that's true for everybody these days, you need emotional intelligence. You've heard of the trainings you can receive in emotional intelligence. It's what many people are lacking these days. So I, I think with uh, emotional intelligence, uh, a mediator uses that skill and gift in when people who are in situations where really their reasoning and judgment is impaired because they're so uh, either fearful or upset. I think also a lot of people have the perception that mediation is not as powerful and not as solid as litigation. And I appreciate that question as well, because it is a common misconception. Uh, People will think it's uh, virtually impotent, if you will. Well, any agreement reached in mediation that's uh, like a divorce is is binding. And in fact, you have the exact same protections, the exact same legal rights, the exact same recourse and mediation as you do anywhere. I'll go further. There's actually more remedies at law in mediation than there are in litigation. Let's say you went to uh, court for your divorce and there was an issue you couldn't resolve, your visitation, house, or money. The judge is going to decide that, but he or she is limited. It's either continue doing what you're doing or stop doing or pay or don't pay. The court has very limited black and white choices, whereas in mediation, the world is actually gray. And couples discover that any remedy that can be devised will be accepted by the court. 